This episode of Huchos is brought to you by Home Grow. Previously on Huchos. Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we're going to plant out our mini NFT propagation system and time lapse it. Let's get the planting out the system. Okay, so I've actually had a really neat idea. Now, these channels, if you don't glue them down, actually become kind of portable propagation runs. And these will make it really easy for us to remove our seedlings and put them into the NFT in a manageable fashion without carrying around like a whole lid. So I don't think you should glue these down. These are actually fantastically manageable runs. Now, as you can see, I've laid out rock wool and I've been extremely stingy with the size of the rock wool. There is quite a bit of water in the bottom of these channels. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add in the tap to uh, the pump because I don't think we need as much water running down the channels. Turn it off for a second. I'm going to cut the tubing, add in our tap, turn it to half, add back the pump, and we can adjust the flow with the tap. And that will just make sure that the water on the bottom remains a film in the system. If you need to know how I made these rock wall cubes, you can check out this video here. It just shows you how to take large culti lean blocks like these, or rock wall slabs, whatever is available to you, and make small rock wall cubes for 1.5 cents around about once you cut them down, because they were slightly large when I made that video. So you can actually use them a lot smaller and get pretty much double the value out of that slab. Okay, so it's now time to plant our seeds. Right after a word from the sponsor of today's video, Home Grow. Has your food done more traveling than you? Home Grow is Australia's fastest growing hydroponic retailer, aiming to promote the sustainable growing of produce in people's own homes. A major factor in indoor growing is the control of your grow environment. And HomeGrow currently have an extensive range of grow tents, including brands like Mars Hydro, Spider Farmer, Homebox, AC Infinity, and many more. For anyone looking for sustainable gardening alternatives utilizing industry-leading technology, HomeGrow provides a useful resource center, including a weekly newsletter which can be accessed by joining their mail subscription list. If any of this has piqued your interest, head to www.homegrow.com.au and use the code HUCHO to receive 5% off your shopping cart. Now, I like to keep my seeds in a little photo book and it just gives you quick access to all of your seed packets in a nice compact manner. So this is my greens book and I think we'll plant maybe some bok choy, some tat soy and some lettuce. Now planting out the system is super simple. I'm just going to sprinkle a couple of seeds in each one. It depends on how confident you are about the germination of these seeds. I haven't used these ones before, so I'm gonna put a few in each hole, just in case they're not 100% reliable. And I've got plenty of them. And I'm not even gonna cover them. You can if you like, but I found that it's just unnecessary. They will germinate in a propagation dome.
Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the top. So I'll just place that to the side. So our pH is 6.7 and our EC, huh, 0.35, which is interesting. It must've had nutrients left in the tub from the last grow that I did. So I'm gonna have to take that into consideration when I add in my nutrients, which I've already pre-mixed. So this here is a 30 liter tub. So my nutrient is one gram per liter full strength. I'm going half strength. So I've got 15 grams of the Campbell's Spec T and 15 grams of the Campbell's Nitro Cal. And now we can test it. You can see the nutrient has brought the pH down. 5.8 pH, which is perfect. We're actually a little bit high on our EC. So I'm gonna add in some water to this to bring that down. We wanna get that down to about one to 1.5, especially at this really early stage of the seedlings growth. But as you can see with the seedlings, a lot of them are starting to push through their first true leaf. And this is the point at which you'll start to see nutrient deficiencies um, showing through if you don't add nutrient. Now, there was actually a little bit of nutrient in this tub and that is absolutely fine. It's not done any damage at all. Uh, in fact, it's probably gotten a few of the larger ones through without any nutrient deficiency. Um, but they will start needing a little bit more. So we've added in the nutrient. I'm gonna add in a little bit more water and we can continue the time lapse. and will you have a look at that result? Now, there are definitely things wrong with this grow, and these plants are stressed. You can tell because at the top here, we actually have one of them bolting and going to flower. Now, that tells me that these are not the ideal conditions, and the reason I think is there is not enough root space for one. They are overcrowded, two, and it's just a really tightly packed space for plants. So even though this technique has worked fantastically for propagation, I would probably not take plants to full term in such a high density. You could definitely, definitely use this with a lower density of plant, but I'm just not sure that these channels are going to be large enough for the root space that they require. So let's pull it apart and have a look at what's going on in the channels. So at the end here, we've actually got the place where each of the channels is fed. And you can see the roots taking advantage of all the extra space that this nutrient actually flowing around the channel is creating. So we'll just lift up this channel, it's still stuck down. You can see the roots from this other channel over here. We'll remove our feeder pipe. There we have a full channel of greens. You can see where the roots are moving out of the channel. So what's actually happening here is the moist air is actually causing air roots that you can see all around the outside of these cocoa pellets. And as you can see here, the holes in the lid have allowed the nutrients to travel back down and into our container. Um, when they overflow around the end here, because the roots have just taken up so much space in uh, those channels. So I'm actually going to put these aside. We're going to take these over to Mel's place where she has the salad table and we're going to plant them in the salad table so that we don't waste any plants. So I'm actually going to unplug the system and we can just remove all of our runs. This is the rock wool run. So they've actually done a lot worse than the cocoa and the fact that they were internal struggling for space and not on the outside has meant that these plants have suffered a little bit from light deprivation, really. 
um, just being outcompeted by the ones that had more access to the light. Look at all those air routes. That is really cool. There's just been so much humidity in amongst these plants. They've just created roots just along the top of the channels. And they've even sent roots down into the reservoir. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the whole top because this is holding the pump as well as all of the piping to the lid. I can get rid of the water in the res and we can use the res to carry our, all of our seedlings over to Mel's place without destroying my car. But that, that is for the next video, which is the salad table update. So just click on the link at the end of this video. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you there. <laughs>